Hello everyone, welcome back to the latest Watchpoint. I'm Greg and we're going to talk about everyone's favourite kind of bug to debug, race conditions. Specifically we're going to look at how Thread Sanitizer can help us with a specific type of race condition, the data race. Data races are where we've got multiple threads within a process hammering away on some shared you know, piece of state, some global state, and the program's behavior depends on the ordering in which those threads update the state, right? And so we need synchronization primitives to kind of make sure that ordering is sane. So here I've taken a program uh, which is uh, cat race, which is uh, directly from, or almost directly from the from the wiki page on um, the Wikipedia page on the thread sanitizer, and uh, it's pretty much simplest race you could think of. So create a thread, and then the main thread and the trial thread kind of both concurrently update this piece of global state. One writes 43, the child writes 42, and then whoever wins the race, one of them will win the race, and then the loser of the race actually will write the other value in. So what we usually see is kind of, as you I suppose might expect, that the main thread uh, usually wins the race, and then the child thread writes 42, and so we usually end up with global being 42. So if I compile that um, uh, in the normal way, and we run that, well, let's, let's see what's the output. Uh, and yeah, it uh, uh, normally we get success. So if I run it a whole bunch of times, like this, actually, you know what, let's, let's see how many times. So uh, i equals zero, echo uh, i, and then we're gonna set i to uh, i plus one, like that, done. Okay, all right, so that time it ran 305 times before failing, run it again. Uh, well, thousands of times before pain. So we got one in, you know, some number, one in hundreds of times. The uh, the main thread actually, the child thread actually wins the race. Um, and so, I mean, obviously a few lines of code we can look at that and we can see very clearly. We want to see how thread sanitizer might help us with that kind of thing. So let's compile it again uh, with minus f sanitize. You won't be surprised to know. Equals thread. And run it. And that actually seems kind of happy, which is uh, maybe a little bit disappointing. But let's do our while loop again. And um, it's actually, okay, now you're seeing how it's taken a few times to get that. Um, that's, uh, kind of, we'll look into exactly why that is in just a minute. But, but it's giving us now useful information here. So it's telling us there's the main thread and there's this child thread T1 and there's a write from the main thread uh, at race.c line 17. Uh, meanwhile, there's been his earlier write by the child thread um, at race.c line 9. Now, um, let's have a look at maybe uh, there's uh, something that's kind of more the, can the canonical race, the one we always see in CS101, slower, well, maybe it's CS201, but you know, the, the, the introduction to threaded programs. And, and like, I've got here, if I can remember where it is. Uh, yeah, simple race. Uh, so simple race, uh, let's look at it like this. Um, this is kind of the canonical race condition, right? We've got two threads, they're incrementing and decrementing some global, we create them, and then uh, the idea is kind of at the end, you know, um, that global should be zero, right? Um, and if I run that, so ggg minus, uh, uh, it's good, good to put dash g by the way, because then thread sanitizer can tell you uh, what lines you know the bad things are happening at um, and so minus f sanitize equals thread simple race dot c if I run this one uh, we do tend to see yeah sure enough it fails uh, every time um, so why was that earlier one only failing some of the time this is where we get into kind of exactly how thread sanitizer is working you know it's not like it, it doesn't necessarily find every single instance of every single race uh, you have to kind of you have to provoke the race what it's doing, just like address sanitizer, which kind of intercepts and instruments all of the memory accesses that the program is making, thread sanitizer just the same. Um, and it's storing for each thread, it stores the last n accesses that it made to memory, the address them what it accessed. And what it'll do is if it finds that, well, this thread and this thread, uh, you know, more than one thread basically accessed the same memory um, without any synchronization primitives, and at least one of those accesses with a was a write, then it's going to say that looks like a race condition, and it'll tell you where those accesses happen. So you can see that these these two things are racing. Let's go back to our, our first one, the really simple one, which like yeah, from the from the it's a bit weird. It's from the thread sanitizer documentation as like the simplest uh, 
uh, simplest one. What actually, I've had a little bit of a poke around here to try and figure out what was going on. And I, I think what's happening is sometimes this thread gets uh, created and before it's like before it's um, even come into life, global writes the value 43 and um, and then there's no other thread at this point really. And then the, and then the child thread comes to life and it writes the value 42. And so thread sanitizer is kind of none the wiser. So I thought, well, let's, let's, okay. So let's put in a little sleep. Um, whoops, I've already got that open. Let's put in a little sleep here. So let's go. So right after the create, let's go, you sleep, oh, I don't know, 10,000, right? And let's uh, do that again. And, um, and now, sure enough, every time it captures it. So that does seem to be what's going on. Notice though, this is kind of neat. Thread sanitizer here has said, it looks, it's as if you were synchronized by a sleep. So it's like saying this looks kind of consistent, but there's a sleep here. Sleep is always a really bad way to synchronize. Uh, because you know all it takes is the system to be heavily loaded, a bit of swapping happening. These days, you know, maybe you're running, you know, in the cloud, and your favorite cloud vendor has decided to like, you know, move that VM from one end of the data center to another, or maybe even between data centers. And your sleep that you thought would be long enough, sure would be long enough, turns out not to be. There's like, like no value of the sleep that's really going to be long enough. So thread sanitizer is basically flagging that as interesting. Um, so just to like double check that, let's. Uh, Let's turn that into just a busy loop so we can go like four in i equals zero i is less than i don't know 10 million one two three one two three uh, like that and now sh this should be pretty reliable okay so so um so that's what's going on so it's, i guess this is a nice little demo of how like it's not perfect it's not going to find it just because sanitizer thread sanitizer doesn't find anything it doesn't mean you don't have a race it just means that you didn't like provoke that racy behavior in that particular run of the application. Uh, uh, now I think is just a good time to have a slight rant on uh, what I think kind of as a, as, 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 as a, as a community, this, this, this thing I give, this is the bog standard uh, race condition you always see, as I'd said, like canonical version. And sure enough, this happens, right? And maybe it's like a reference counting thing or something. And, and obviously that's very bad. You know, you can end up with leaks or use after free. Um, and they're very hard to diagnose. Uh, they are, though, I think actually the minority, I think like 10% or something of races are like this, are these data races. I think most race conditions are between your program and the system itself and the operating system or perhaps another program. OK, so um, let me, something like this, I think, is quite a common one. Um, so we're using uh, we're using uh, SIG wait here to wait until the program gets a SIG int, which you can get by doing control C at the program and then it. And so this, so if we if we just show this one, um, uh, select C. So if I run that, um, so it says interrupt me because I run do control C now. The terminal will send a sig int, and there we go. And an excellent and sig wait will return, and it says well done, and that's all good. But if um, there's a uh, there's um, there's actually a bug here because we don't mask the signal until and, and, until here. And I've added a sleep three to make this easier to demonstrate. Uh, so um, if I run the program again, but this time I'm really quick with my control C, the control C comes in and look, it's not interrupted, right? It's, it's lost, that's gone missing um, because I didn't mask the signal in time. It's a single threaded program, right? Um, Thread sanitizer will find some of those kind of races. It's kind of designed for data races, kind of because that's what address sanitizer is good at, right? Intercept, in, instrumenting memory accesses. But um, uh, it can find other things. And there's there's a bunch of there's a bunch of um, there's a, a bunch of uh, options that we can send in. Uh, let's have a look at them here. So. Um, so uh, you do it like this, with, with, with the options you send, but you get the, you make is a TSAN options environment variable, where it's a single string, which when we, stat, we, we send in options like this. So we've got um, uh, options like report thread leaks. So if we program exits and leave some threads hanging around, it will warn you about that. Probably, you know, I mean, probably at the, at the minimum, it's kind of rude. Uh, if you, um, uh, if, a, if, if a locked mutex is destroyed, um, you, you may not have meant that. Um, uh, you probably didn't, in fact. 
Um, this is an interesting one, right? So this isn't really to do with data races at all, but it's just something that it can help us with. So asynchronous uh, report signal unsafe. So I find a lot of people don't really, this is a really common mistake. I see this all the time. Uh, people have a signal handler and they, in, in, and they write, um, you know, they do so printf or something from the signal handler. That's not safe, right? In fact, there's a pretty smallish set of asynchronous signal safe uh, libc functions that you are allowed to call from uh, from signal handlers because libc likes to take locks and things, right? So libc, you know, you call printf, libc takes a lock while it does its thing. And um, if you're unlucky and your sig alarm or whatever signal you're catching comes in, in the middle of that printf when the lock is held, and then your signal handler runs and your signal handler does a printf, then the first thing it's gonna do is try and take that lock and oh, it can't, right? So deadlock, really nasty kind of, uh, you know, rare, very easy for those kind of issues to uh, escape testing. Then, you know, your poor old user, uh, you know, hits, gets unlucky and they hit this and they say this, the thing locked up, but I couldn't reproduce it. You try and reproduce it, you can't reproduce it. And it's sort of one of those bug reports that just goes, mm -hmm and you know waits for the next person um so you know just a nice little example there of of uh race conditions that have nothing to do with you don't even have multiple threats right you don't even need to have signals um so you know you maybe you've got a you're calling out to some other service you sleep for what you think is long enough just like i was saying before going to get the result and it turns out one time in a billion the result's not ready in the time in in your, your sleep was just a bit too short um, you know, maybe you're reading off the network and again, one time in a billion, you read, read returns short, um, which if you're reading off the socket, it's allowed to do. And, uh, you know, you, you don't read quite as many bytes as you thought you would. And you don't. So there's all these, and I think 90% of race conditions are like not these simple data races that we always get taught. Um, but data races are particularly nasty to, 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 to debug. And the reason for that is that, well, I think actually there's two things that makes bugs difficult. Okay, first is how long elapses between that bad line of code executing and, and you noticing, right, with the assertion failing or the seg fault or God forbid, under, you know, bad results. Longer that time is, the harder it is to um, debug, which by the way is what, why assertions are so useful because they like the narrow that window and also by bad results are the worries the worst because typically it's a long time has elapsed. The other kind of vector for like how bad bugs are is how deterministic are they, right? Because if they're deterministic, the program fails in the same way each time, I can just keep running it. Every run I tease out another clue and I slowly build up the picture, you know, one piece of the jigsaw puzzle at a time and then I get the idea, figure out finally what's going on. It's not elegant, it might take me a long time and many runs, but I can get there. But if it does a different thing every time, you know, and like the ground's sort of shifting beneath my feet, really hard, sometimes basically impossible to build up a full picture of what is going on. And race conditions, of course, with well, this latter one, like, I mean, they're that by definition, they're going to be non-deterministic. And uh, very often data races are these kind of silent killers, you know, they leave some sort of bit of nasty state that you don't notice for some time or a long time later, which is why Thread Sanitizer is so useful because it will really, well, it will, it will not just narrow that window, it will take that window down to zero uh, in, in a lot of cases. Um, a lot of options to control it. So, um, you know, I mentioned that it sort of stores for each thread, it stores a sort of history of uh, the accesses that that thread uh, has made to, me to, to memory. Um, and so by default, I think it's 32,000 accesses are kept per thread. Um, uh, and this history size is two by default, so it's actually two to it's uh, uh, yeah, 16k to the power of the history size. So, um, the default is to be 32k entries, and you can, if you make this three, you'll get 64k entries, etc. And um, so, just give you a longer win, which that basically increases the window that gives the gives thread sanitizer more opportunities to spot races. Um, on the downside, it will chew up more memory, of course. And if you have many, many threads, that can be an issue. You can force a certain exit code if it finds a problem, which is useful, you know, if you're building this into your CI or something. Um, and then just worth mentioning these last two, I think. So halt on error and stop on start. So very useful if you want to attach uh, GDB or UDB or, uh, you know, LLDB or whatever debugger you want to attach either at the beginning. So you can like poke around and see what happens as it runs or, you know, when it all goes wrong kind of at the end. Uh, and you can change your code to be kind of uh, sanitizer aware, 
Um, so this is true for all the sanitizers, but but uh, this is how you do it for, for thread sanitizers. So we have this, uh, you can to look at if this um, preprocessor macro is defined, uh, thread sanitizer, then um, uh, well, the, the has feature is the um, is the is the macro you're looking for then, and if that if that thread sanitizer feature is there, then you can have code that's, you know conditionally compiled for thread sanitizer, and of course you know also um, maybe for not, and you can also tell the compiler not to sanitize certain functions by using these attributes. Um, so attribute attribute uh, uh, no sanitize thread will tell tell the compiler don't sanitize it, don't, don't do thread sanitizer instrumentation on this thread. Um, actually, it will do, still do some instrumentation, so it won't record the access like um, uh, fully for each um, uh, uh, for each access in that way. But it will do enough um, to to uh, if you basically if you if you put this if you if you will get some instrumentation, just minimal. If you really don't want any instrumentation at all, then you can use this disable sanitizer instrumentation, which will override for both the set. Then this one overrides the thread one. And uh, that will turn off all, all, all instrumentation completely from that function. The problem is that will likely lead to a lot of false positives. Um, so you, 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 you want to sort of tread carefully there. But you, if you know what you're doing, you can you can control it at that kind of fine grain level. There are many more options and many more things you can do. You can look at the online documentation. This is just a taster. Um, but hopefully you can see it's it's pretty simple, you know, very simple to get going and can give you very quick feedback and um, you know generally just... Uh, well worth doing. Thank you for listening, everybody. Next time we'll look at the Valgrind equivalent, um, which is Hellgrind. Bye-bye.